as most of you know, that most of you must know that I am a Vincentian priest. You know, our community was founded by St. Vincent de Paul. I would like to share with you a few thoughts about what I think are the gifts that Vincent offers us. You know, Vincent's name is synonymous with love. It's synonymous with charity. And I think that Vincent's main gift to us is a reminder that we must have a deep love for others just as he did, especially for those in need. You know, there are many ways of expressing our love for others. Tonight, I, today I would like to highlight just a few practical ways of doing this. You know, my dad, Lord rest him, taught me many things. And one of them was in the area of charity, concern for others. One of the first thanksgivings I can remember is when he explained to me the custom of breaking the turkey wishbone. You know, the one who gets, uh, ends up with the bigger end uh, gets his or her wish granted. So he told me to make a wish. I did. And then I grasped one end of the wishbone, my dad the other, and I was so eager to have my wish come true that I was utterly disappointed when I saw that I wound up with the small end of the bone while my dad had the bigger part. But dad looked at me, smiled and said, that's all right, Charles, my wish was that you would get your wish. Folks, that's the way my dad was. That's the way Vincent was. And that is the way we are supposed to be, concerned about other people and their needs, their feelings. And we should wish that only the best things happen for them. Here is a way of expressing our love for others. And I think I can explain how we can do it by sharing with you another one of my favorite stories. This is the one about the young man who stopped in at a barber shop for a shave and a manicure. And while he was getting shaved, he looked at the young lady giving him the manicure and he said, hey honey, you're pretty cute. How about going out with me tonight? And she said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. And he said, why not? And she said, because I'm married. And he said, big deal. Why don't you just call the bum up and tell him you're gonna come home late tonight? She smiled and said, why don't you tell him yourself? He's the guy who's shaving you. You know, folks, the point of the story is that the customer didn't think before he spoke. He wasn't careful about what he said. He didn't weigh the consequences of his words, and he could have gotten into big trouble. And my point is this. We should think before we speak or answer someone else, especially a member of our family. Let's be careful of what we say. Let's weigh the consequences what we are of, of what we are about to say. You know, I think sometimes an impatient or critical remark, a remark made in anger, can do great damage to a relationship. You know, so often we hurt another person. You know, something he or she says or does annoys us. And what do we do? We blurt out the very first thing that comes to our mind. We think it's gonna make us feel better, but it doesn't. Later on we say, me and my big mouth, why did I ever say that? So folks, what I'm saying is, let's think before we speak. Here's another way of showing our love for others. Trying not to pass judgment on them. You know, let's be careful of finding faults in others. There are many reasons for doing this. Uh, here is one reason why we should not judge others. 
Some time ago, I was giving a homily on this topic about judging other people, how we should not, uh, we should not try to be looking for the faults in other people. And a woman came up to me after Mass and as I was greeting the people, and she said, you know, Father, women have many faults. Men have only two. Now, I was surprised to hear her as a woman uh, say that. And so she continued. She said, yes, Father, men have only two faults, everything they say and everything they do. So come on, let's face it. We all have faults, men and women, boys and girls, and we have more than two of them. And that is why we should go very slowly before we find fault in other people, because we too have our faults. Here are a few positive ways of showing our love for others. A woman tells this story. She went rushing into a greeting card store a week before Christmas, and she bought a box of 50 identical Christmas cards. And without really bothering to read the verse on the inside of the card, she hastily signed her name to them. She put them in the envelopes, addressed them, and mailed them, all but one. Several days after they had been mailed, she came across that one card which had not been sent. And for the very first time, she really looked at the message. And she was horrified because the message, the, the, the message read, this card is just to say, a little gift is on its way. <laughs> you know, my friends, this Christmas, like every Christmas, there will be a great deal of gift giving to show our love for others, especially the members of our own family. And that's good, that's great. It's very thoughtful. But we should continue to give gifts to our loved ones even after Christmas Day is done and gone with. We should continue to give gifts to our loved ones every day. And when you come right down to it, what our loved ones really need and want is our love and the expressions of our love, a hug, a kiss. You know, the gifts we should continue to give to others are very important and valuable ones. The gift of patience, kindness, a word of encouragement, a word of gratitude, a word of comfort, a word of support, and especially the gift of forgiveness. You know, I leave you with this thought. A woman living in New York City tells it. She said that she was not able to give her husband a hug and a kiss before he left for a business trip in San Francisco. He had to leave for the airport very early and he didn't want to wake her up. But she figured that she would see him the next day when he returned home. She could give him the hug and the kiss then. She figured wrong. It was September 11th, 2001. Her husband was a passenger on United Airlines Flight 93, the hijacked plane that crashed in a Pennsylvania field. Later on, she gave a TV interview, and this is what she said. Husbands, hug your wives. Wives, hug your husbands. Parents, hug your children. Children, hug your parents every chance you get. Tell them that you love them every chance you get. You never know when it's going to be the last time. Folks, if 9-11, as we call it, taught us anything, it taught us how fragile life is and how precious our loved ones are. You know, if we knew for certain that a loved one would not be with us tomorrow, we would treat that loved one with so much more kindness and patience today. We would really try to hold back that unkind, cutting, sarcastic, and impatient remark. We would hug them, and we would tell them how much we love them. Let us continue our Mass.
I want to thank St. Vincent for giving me the opportunity to share with you a few things about the love that we should have for one another. I want to thank you who came here and those of you who watched on the internet for being with me these past nine days. May you all continue to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and our Blessed Mother. May you continue to experience the peace of mind and heart that their presence brings us.